All right, I'm Dave Brett, and um, let's take a look at some of the differences between um, analog and digital. Um, if you haven't watched the uh, setup video that I did describing the way that all this stuff is hooked up, uh, I go into depth about the theory and concept and wiring and stuff. Um, but a quick rundown is I'm trying to create an audio magnifying glass where we're able to hear issues that are necess not necessarily um, that are blind to our naked ear um, and highlight those so we become aware of them. And uh, also, since we're transporting over YouTube, we're not going to do like these blind listening tests trying to determine whether or not some nuance is audible or not. I just want to make them as blatant or more blatant so that we can actually hear them clearly and then make a determination or become aware of them. Uh, the way I'm doing it is we're taking a bunch of channels and putting them in series. So if there's a problem, let's say there's a small problem, barely audible on one channel. Well, if we put 10 channels in series, then that problem should be 10 times more audible or 10 times more apparent. Of course, we wouldn't do this live, or at least we try not to. A lot of digital flips and a lot of uh, redundant audio gear in series is not optimum. On the other hand, hopefully this will highlight some um, differences between the two formats so that we can know more about them and know what we're listening for. Uh, so let's get started. The, I will turn on the, right now we've got the tone generator set at 2K or 2.066K. You can drop that down a little bit. Um, and we can see the sine waves there on the meter, and we're looking at an analog channel, uh, analog console channel one. And we're PFLing that channel. And you can see there's two identical sine waves. Uh, the first one is, we can actually lower this down and see that the input to the channel, which is the yellow one, is almost exactly identical to the output of the channel, or the output of the PFL. BFL bus in blue green. Now let's go to, we'll go to the second channel. So what I'm going to do is this PFL system is additive. If I push another button, it'll get bigger and then I unpush. So I'll try and do it as um, evenly as possible, but there's channel two versus channel one. And you can see that it doesn't even, um, it changes very little if at all. And a three and a four. To five and you can also look down here on the Duros meter and on the Duros meter you can see this is a one each LED is one dB so we can see that first red LED is lit and that we're not losing any level oh, we lost a little bit of level there um, and that's more due to my calibration I'm guessing because the level came back so in order to get this set up I basically calibrated each of these faders as best I could to uh, maintain a very um, as close to a precise output as possible. And there we've got uh, the same and the same and then all 10. And then we can go down and bring this top trace down and see that the 10th channel is almost identical to the first, but we've actually got a slight phase shift there of, um, I don't know how much it is, but it's very slight. Um, so there, it, we're slowly introducing a, a phase offset um, by the 10th. And we can watch that go away as I go down. And that's at 2K. All right, so there's our analog. We see that its effect on 2K is a slight phase shift. Um, and the volume levels I've calibrated around, uh, I think I calibrated them at 1K, so they should be locked in at 1 or 2K anyway, because that was the test. But now I'm going to go to the digital uh, console, and let me move this trace back up. And what you first see is that the digital console has moved the output trace, the one on the bottom, um, it's offset it. And that is due to the latency, not necessarily a phase shift. 
Um, well, we don't really know yet. It could be a phase shift and latency, but definitely due to a latency, and we're going to see more of that. So let's go ahead and look at what happens when I go to channel 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10. Okay, 10. That's interesting. At 2K, we don't see much phase shift at all. Uh, the latency um, differential at all. That's kind of odd, actually. That's kind of surprising. Let's go ahead and look what happens if I go down to, let's say, 1K. And what's happening, I believe, and let's test this theory, is that the latency is kind of time aligned with the wavelength of 2K and it's showing up fairly um, on top of each other. So let's go ahead and do a lower frequency. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's more in line with what I would expect to see. Uh, we'll look at that more with the pulse, where we'll actually be able to see the latency increment up and uh, the summation of that. So that's uh, 1K, 2K, or 1500. And let's look at something on the top end. Let's go up to 20K. And we'll change our divisions. Boop. And 20K, 23K. Okay, we're at 23K now. And that's interesting. At 23K, the digital console with one on the, just going through 1A to D, D to A conversion, uh, we're seeing the wavelength is um, unstable. It's getting bigger and smaller. That, I will bet you, as I get up to 24K, which is one half the sampling rate of the 48K, look at that. It's basically um, unable to uh, discern the signal because it's too close to one half the sample rate. And that's um, one of the requirements. So now, as we get, let's go down to 22.5, and you can kind of see it. It's unable to pick it up, and we're getting level increases and drops. Um, let's go ahead and go back to 24K, and we'll try that same frequency as we go down the line. So that's one channel of the digital console at 24K. There's two channels in series, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we see it just go to zero level. It's just um, being filtered out. A low pass filter trying to get rid of those frequencies because it's not doing a pretty job of them. Wonder what the analog console is going to do with 24K. Now, this isn't a great console, so I don't expect much, but let's take a look. We got the single channel. And there is one channel on this analog console at 23.95K. And we're going to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and... Okay, so 10 channels in series of the analog console. And we see a drop. It looks like on this Duros meter, 1, 2, 3, 4 dB, 4, 5 dB drop, but it's passing it through. Let's go ahead and look at the phase of that, I guess. We might as well. Uh, we can pile this down here. Make it, and we can see that the blue is um, slightly out of phase. Out of phase is shifted forward slightly. And two, three, and we see it moving forward farther with each channel, gradually moving forward. Um, so we are seeing a phase shift, probably due to some low pass filter in there. And back to one. Cool. So we're, uh, whether this is important or not uh, for hearing, probably not. Um, just interesting to know that those exist. And uh, this is kind of giving us a, I believe a um, um, good selling point for using a higher sample rate than 48k. If you have a lot of, if you care about high frequency energy in the 20k plus region, and also it's really interesting that these um, analog consoles rated 20 to 20k are actually putting out and dealing with frequencies above 
um, 20k 24k we got some signal up here in fact let's get curious with that we'll go back to the analog console where we are and let's go up and see how high this thing goes up I'm at 26k 27k and it's still partying right all along it's um, got some roll off from 1 to 10 but it doesn't seem to mind. I'm at the limit of that. I don't want to scroll it all back down, but I'm guessing this goes up 30K and beyond. Um, all right. I think that does us for today. Um, we looked at some high frequency stuff. We saw some latency. We saw some phase shift. Um, oh, let's do one more thing. Let's do, um, let's go back to 20K. Let's go to 20K and let's see what um, the digital versus analog consoles are doing as far as roll off. Which one's more flat at that high frequency? So at 20K, this is the digital console. Let's do the analog first. The analog console. And the analog console, we do see that the blue is smaller than the orange or yellow. And we're going to go up and we're seeing that. I'm just going to go straight to 10. So one channel, 10 channels, one channel, 10 channels. We can see that 20K, the analog console is rolling off uh, probably, oh, we can see how many dB. It's rolling off about one dB right when it gets in and it's rolling off two more. So it's about three dB down, 10 channels in um, at 20K. Let's do the same thing with the digital console. Digital console, one channel in is at zero dB. Uh, we have no roll off. And as we go down the line, we're seeing our shift in wavelength. And I think that's the last channel there. Um, and we always see 1 dB a drop over the 10 channels of flipping A to D, D to A. So it's uh, very flat. Uh, so we're seeing less roll off and then a steep sharp cut on the digital console up at 22 plus. And the analog, we're seeing a gradual roll off that seems to extend up to about 30 or more in this particular hardware. Um, when we switch out hardware, those parameters should stay about the same. We should see a gradual roll off in the top of analog unless they've introduced something specifically for it. Um, and we should see a fairly flat response with a steep roll off as we get to whatever they've determined as the highest frequency or the one half the sampling rate on the digital console. Uh, it's kind of fun to see it. Uh, all right, that should do for today. We'll get into some pulse testing and um, audibility stuff and um, see what else we can find in soon videos. Cool, cool. Hope you like it.